This Polish swan disguised recon drone is built to spy. Sometimes you see something so odd and so absurd that sheer morbid curiosity demands a deeper investigation. That was the case when I spotted this ungainly drone dressed up as a duck. Uh, I mean, a swan. I, I don't know what it is, actually, but I know it will haunt my dreams for weeks. Hey friends, Wes here, and when you go to a major defense expo, you expect to see the sleek armored vehicles with more chrome than a 1950s Cadillac and drones that look like they flew straight out of a sci-fi movie. What you don't expect is a robot swan, yet that is exactly what Poland unveiled at the MSPO 2025 Expo. The Kaska, a covert amphibious drone disguised as a graceful waterfowl. Just to be clear, somewhere a committee said yes to this and I love it, but I also hate it. The Polish Kazka drone is what happens when military engineering smashes headfirst into a Disney Imagineer reject Facebook group. The head of the decoy hides a camera, giving the bird a cyclops mechanical eye. From a few hundred meters away, it might pass as just another lazy swan floating on a pond. Up close though, it looks less like nature and more like a taxidermy project from hell with seams, antennas, and a distinctly non-avian undercarriage. I'm not sure if someone was trolling the expo or what. It's almost what a surveillance bot would look like in a spoof comedy movie about war, like the 1984 action comedy Top Secret starring the late Val Kilmer in his film debut. The design choices are telling. Ducks are squat, they're noisy, and they're common. Perfect camouflage for a marsh in Poland. Swans, by contrast, are graceful, territorial and big enough to hide the optical gear. In that sense, the Casca is a compromise between a biological plausibility and an engineering necessity. The bird is the costume, the drone underneath is the stagehand, and together they hope to fool Russian soldiers long enough to get a camera feed or sneak in an explosive payload. The hybrid look also raises questions about deployment. A drone like this would not be racing across fields or buzzing overhead like an FPV. Instead, it would loiter. Imagine it drifting near a bridge or sitting quietly on a reservoir while feeding back reconnaissance imagery. If it ever carried explosives, it would not be a kamikaze weapon so much as a Trojan swan, lulling the target into complacency before striking. What Russian soldier would willingly approach this robotic monstrosity is another question, but Russian soldiers sometimes do dumb sh**. High five. All right. The small wheels beneath suggest some limited amphibious roll, rolling from shoreline to pond, but the utility of that is debatable. The thing is, few battlefields are designed for casual swan strolls. Now, I sound like I'm being hard on Poland's swan drone. I actually love it, and I love the Maskarovka at work here. While its disguise may be dubious, the intent is clear to add another layer of misdirection to, to a war already thick with decoys, fakes, and inflatable tanks. The Kazka might never be truly convincing to a trained observer, but in a battlefield saturated with drones, every second of hesitation counts. If the enemy thinks that's just a bird before realizing it's transmitting their coordinates, then this bizarre cyborg swan has done its job. Ridiculous or not, the Kazka highlights a timeless truth of war. Deception can be more powerful than brute force. The Greeks knew it when they wheeled a suspiciously large horse up to the gates of Troy. Washington knew it during the Revolutionary War, feeding the British bad intel through Hercules Mulligan and other spies. And Germany's generals learned it the hard way in 1944 when the Allies' Operation Fortitude convinced them that D-Day invasion was coming at Calais instead of Normandy. If your enemy believes you are weak where you are strong, or sees nothing where danger hides, you've won half the battle. That is why modern militaries obsess over stealth coatings, electronic warfare, and yes, even drones and duck suits. If the Polish Kazka looks like something you would find in a discount hunting supply store, China has gone in the opposite direction, sinking real research into making drones that can pass as actual birds. A few years ago, video footage emerged of Chinese ornithopter drones that flap their wings, bank, and glide like the real thing. At a distance, even trained observers struggle to tell them apart from genuine pigeons. These are equipped with cameras and communication packages designed for stealthy surveillance in urban or battlefield settings. That is the stark contrast. Poland's Kazka is banking on novelty and situational deception, while China is banking on biomimicry so convincing that it can roost on a rooftop without anyone raising an eyebrow. One is a theatrical prop, 
The other is a spy that could perch outside your window and watch without suspicion. Now, the Chinese approach also highlights how bird-shaped drones can be more than a gimmick. Ornithopters exploit the fact that most people ignore birds. I know I do. Freaking hate birds. A pigeon on a power line, a sparrow fluttering across a trench, a seagull hovering near a coastline battery. None of these things raises alarms. Now imagine each one potentially carrying a camera or a sensor or even a lightweight jammer. That's infiltration. Poland Swan seems destined for niche roles, like loitering in marshes and monitoring rivers against Russian troops who are often half drunk and barely paying attention. And maybe that's enough. Of course, the difficulty with analyzing Chinese technology is that they don't let people like me anywhere close. So while their advancements look impressive, it could all be smoke and mirrors and facsimiles. Both approaches, the Chinese ornithopters and the Polish Kazakh duck swan drone, have their place in a war where decoys have already fooled satellites, misled radar, and drawn fire from air defenses even a goofy swan box could be useful. The absurdity of a swan drone also ties into something that stopped the Russian army cold in 2022. Terrain. When Ukraine deliberately flooded fields north of Kyiv, Russian tanks got bogged down in mud. It wasn't fancy hardware that stopped the assault. It was water and misdirection. A column designed for a blitzkrieg became a scrapyard in the swamp. This is where the Kazakh's weirdness starts to make sense. A swan floating innocently on a pond in Zaporizhia doesn't raise eyebrows until it radios back the coordinates of a Russian supply truck. Now, the big question is cost. A $500 FPV drone can deliver a bigger punch and fly further than the Polish drone's 5-kilometer leash, but there are niche uses where the disguise has value. In environments where soldiers are trained to ignore wildlife, a swan with a camera might get closer than a quadcopter buzzing like a chainsaw. And unlike FPVs, the Casca can sit quietly for hours watching a bridge or patrol route before striking. Still, it's hard not to chuckle. When you picture the battlefield of the future, you might think hypersonic missiles or AI swarms or robotic tanks. You probably didn't imagine a flotilla of angry cyborg swans advancing on Russian positions. Nothing else, Poland's battle duck swan hybrid is a slap in the face reminder that creativity in war often looks absurd right up until it works. So will Kazka become a legend of battlefield trickery or just a quirky footnote in a defense expo program? That depends on whether Ukrainian or Polish troops find a mission where a fake swan duck drone succeeds where high-tech drones cannot. History suggests that even the strangest deception has its day. After all, the Trojan horse was a goofy, oddly terrifying animal also. Okay, that's it for today, friends. If you would be so kind as to subscribe, it would be much appreciated. This channel only exists because of people like you who enjoy learning about the stuff I talk about. And as always, glory to Ukraine, glory to the heroes. Crimea is Ukraine.